kids. Hey, I'm here to tell you, uh, teach you a little bit about uh, something called Lenz's Law, otherwise, you know, known as conservation of energy, because that's all really Lenz's Law really is, is conservation of energy. So um, hopefully at this point we have talked about Faraday's Law, or you have learned about Faraday's Law, and that a change in flux will induce, a change in flux, you know, per time, but a change in flux will induce a voltage. That voltage, as long as it is a conductor, uh, that you are inducing the voltage in, that voltage will make a current, and that current has its own magnetic field. So essentially the negative sign is saying this, hey, you know what? The induced voltage will induce a current whose magnetic field must oppose the original change in flux. And you might be like, uh, I don't know what that means. Well, you will in about five minutes, okay? All right, let me show you a quick demo because it's pretty cool. I have a copper tube here, you know, pretty exciting, pretty exciting. Okay, I have a metal ball and I'm gonna drop it and you'll see, well, of course, the metal ball just falls super fast, but not if I replace it with the magic metal ball. Ready? Ooh. What? Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. Dude. Yeah, it's, um. well, if you didn't figure out, that is a really strong magnet, and the other one was not a strong magnet. It was just a metal ball. Um, but uh, so we'll talk about why that happens too, because you know physics is cool. Um, but let's go back to let's let's pretend I have this. So let's uh, let's pretend I have a magnetic field that is represented by these dots. So that would be the positive z direction. The magnetic field is coming out of the page, um, and I have a metal bar that is moving that way through uh, the magnetic field, okay? It's just a metal bar, okay? It's not even a loop, it's just a metal bar. Um, and you might think, well, I thought you have to have a loop. Well, you know, sort of. Um, but uh, in this case, you're actually gonna induce a voltage across that metal bar because uh, if you were to do your right hand rule, so this metal bar is full of electrons uh, and if my electrons are moving this way, your thumb would point the opposite way. So our thumb would point this way. Um, and then my magnetic field is pointing out of the page. So the force on these electrons are gonna go to the top of the page. So as this thing moves across, you're gonna get these negative charge built up at the top. Well, where those negatives come from, they came from the bottom. So at the bottom, you're gonna have this positive charge here. Okay, and if you want to do it with, hey, there's positive charge in there, so positive charge is going this way, so my magnetic field's coming out, so the force on the positive charge is to the bottom, that's fine. Um, just please don't talk about protons moving around, because remember, protons don't move around. Um, but if you take a look, so hey, I have separated the charge. If I've separated charge, then I have induced a voltage across there. And the voltage that I've induced, and in, if you want, that's a, that will be a separate video, but the voltage that I have induced is equal to, the voltage equals B, the magnetic field strength, L, the length of that bar, and V, the, the speed that that's going, okay? Um, but here's the part that I think is pretty cool, and because you're gonna have to be able to find the direction of the, mag or the current. Well, if this thing is just moving, I don't get current because it's just a metal bar. There's no complete circuit. But let's say this metal bar is moving on and it's touching this metal rail that kind of makes a loop like this. Well, you can see as this metal bar moves across, I'm increasing my flux inside this loop, okay? Um, and if I'm increasing the flux inside this loop, well, the negative says that the induced voltage will make its own current and that current has to oppose the change. So if we kind of go through these three steps in this case, hey, if uh, how is the flux changing? Well, in this case, I am increasing dots because inside when this thing is over, I'm gonna have more dots inside that loop, okay? Um, well, I need to oppose that change. Well, how do you oppose that change? Well, you can either have less dots or you can have more X's. When you do this second step, you always wanna pick the one where you're getting more why? Because current makes 
magnetic field. So we're going to get the one that gives you more. And then, hey, look, we're going to pretend this is the loop. I realize it's a square, but this is what I have. Um, if I want x's on the inside, I'm going to use my right hand. Okay. And do you see how, oh, look, my current has to go around that way. If, I, if my current was going around this way, do we see how that would give me dots? That would give me dots inside. I don't want that. I want x's inside. So that what's happening is these x's are canceling out some of the dots. So it's trying to keep it more or less the same. So if my current is going around that way, that way, so that's my direction of the current here. Well, that is clockwise. So that would give me, hey, if the current goes around clockwise. But here's the part that's super cool. Ready? Remember, we said positive charge here, negative charge here. Remember, conventional current flows in the direction that positive charge would go. Well, that means the current has to flow that way. Wow, that's cool. I know. Super cool. Does everybody see that okay? Okay. All right, let's do one more uh, example problem with this. So we'll use, we'll stay with our dots. Let me just erase my setup and... Here's going to be our new problem. So rather than a bar in there, let's say my new problem is this. I have okay, this loop like this that's going to move into this magnetic field. Okay, um, So this loop, right now there is no flux. And then later on, it's going to get more flux. Does everybody see that? Um, and well, this is going to end up being the same type of problem, but that's okay. Because um, just, just keep in mind, kids, we're not memorizing things. We're understanding things. So actually, just so that we actually understand things, we'll make this into the... We'll change the direction of our magnetic field. All right. So let's say my magnetic field is like this. Okay. And my... My, my loop is going to be moving into it, so I'm increasing the, in this case, if I was to go through my three steps, well, my first step would be, hey, I am increasing x's, okay? Well, I want to oppose that change. If I want to oppose that change, I need to either decrease x's. Well, how do you decrease x's? You make more dots. So I want dots to be inside this. And if you think about, okay, I want dots in here, that means my hand has to go around like this. Oh, that would be counterclockwise. So then the current would go counterclockwise. But I want to show you we can also do this the same way that we were doing the other thing as far as like figuring out which way the positives and negatives are going to go. Well, right now, there's electrons here, but... There's no, there's not going to be any, um, the charge isn't going to move one way or the other because it's not in a magnetic field, okay? There's no magnetic field. But when this gets like this, when it gets to here, this wire is in a magnetic field. Now, this little bit of the wire, this little bit of wire is in the magnetic field too. So if we do our same steps that we did before and we say, all right, I have electrons moving to the top of the board. So that means my thumb has to point to the bottom of the board. My magnetic field is going into the board. That means my electrons are going to get pushed to this side. So I'm going to draw on this side. I'm going to get my electrons are going to get pushed over there, which means they had to come from somewhere. It came from here. So it's going to get positive charge. Now, this wire is going to get negatives on the right side and positives on the left, but it's a wire, like whatever. It's, it's, you're not really going to build up a voltage across a wire, but you will build up a voltage here because there's, there's a length difference there. So, hey, I'm going to build this up. If you take a look, well, if this has positive and this has negative, the current has to flow that way. Oh, which is exactly going to be my counterclockwise right here, okay? So, which, hey, look, if that's gonna flow around that way, if that's positive, that's negative, it has to go this way, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Remember here, okay, 
down here there is no resistance, okay? So like, that's why it's gonna flow this way. Later on, I just wanna show you if I was to draw it when it's fully in the loop. So let me draw it so it's fully in the loop. Now, if we do it when it's like this, and remember it's still moving this way, well, I'm gonna get a positive charge building up here and a negative charge building up here. But I would also get a positive charge building up here and a negative charge building up here. So if you take a look, I'm not gonna get any current to flow here. Why? Because there's no change in flux. As it's, when it's fully in the magnetic field, there's no change in flux. And you can see that this, the positive charge won't go from here to here um, because it's positive, it's positive. There's no reason for it to go that way. So hopefully that makes sense. Lenz's law, which is really, a con is really conservation of energy. Um, so there you have it. Um, let me explain this little guy, okay? So if we do this little demo, here is, so imagine that you have the loop, okay? And I'm gonna kinda draw the edges of my thing to be kind of big there. But if I have a magnet, it really is a magnet. I realized it was a ball magnet, but if I have North Pole, South Pole here, So I have something that looks like that. As this thing falls through, let's say there's going to be a loop down here. Well, this loop is going to have an increasing magnetic flux pointing this way towards the bottom of the page. Well, it will then make a current that has to go against that change in flux. Well, if it's gonna go that way, so it's gonna be pointing towards the top of the page, my current had better go around that way, so inside it's opposing that change. Now remember, if this magnet stopped, then what would happen is you wouldn't get a change and it would immediately start falling again. Because if you don't have a change, you don't get a voltage, and if you don't get a voltage, you don't get a current. If you don't have a current, you don't have a magnetic field. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Bye, kids.